Today on Sound Iron Sessions, things get a little bit dark as we take a look at writing a horror cue. Stick around. Welcome back to another episode of Sound Iron Sessions. My name is Craig Peters, and today on Sound Iron Sessions, we're going to be looking at writing a horror cue. And me personally, growing up as a kid, I always loved watching horror movies, and I think a big part of what makes horror movies so scary is the music and sound design. So I thought it'd be fun today to uh, get a little bit dark, get a little bit creepy on this episode, and uh, yeah. a lot of sound design, a lot of layering, uh, a lot of really dark, dissonant sounds. So. I'm going to show you how uh, I wrote the cue, we're going to listen to it, and then I'm going to dissect it and break it down for you guys and show you track by track just what I did. Uh, a lot of really cool stuff going on in this one, so let's take a look at the cue and then we'll talk about it. If you're going to write a horror cue, something like a toy piano is probably one of the things most people wouldn't think about because when you think of a toy piano, you think of something very childlike, but something about using that in a horror cue just makes it creepy. So as you can hear, the sounds of this piano are very innocent and very childlike, but at the same time, like I said, in the context we're using it for horror, it just makes things, it can make things pretty scary. So as we go along with adding more creepier sounding effects to this horror track, I use the Mercury Elements Choral Effects, and these are some really cool, interesting whisper sounds, and it just sounds like a witch is just whispering in your ears. It's uh, really creepy, and I thought it would be great for this track. Now, as you're going to hear, a lot of these tracks are very subtle sometimes, but it's all about layering and just creating that sort of uh, soundscape of just terror is basically what I'm going for. And the next one we have is the Mercury Elements Choral Effect Sea Falls. And this is just another choral effect uh, in Mercury Elements, uh, just sort of adding that really weird tension. Um, just It's just eerie as hell to me, like when you listen to it by itself. So as you can hear some of these sounds, like when you hear it just played back even by itself, it's just, it has this sort of, uh, makes you feel very uneasy. It doesn't make you feel very good, especially when you're composing music by yourself in your room. Uh, some of these sounds can, you know, freak you out, especially if your phone rings out of nowhere or something. <laughs> 
Next, we're going to be taking a look at the Symphony Series Brass Ensemble Trombone Effects. And these are some articulations that maybe you think you'll, you might never use, but for horror, they're perfect. So uh, I really wanted to use these, especially on the parts where everything sort of slams together, like sort of the jump scares. And uh, it just has this really um, weird brassy dissonance to it. It just sounds really chaotic, which I love. <laughs> And I really love how this sounds in the context of the track because it just sounds like everything is just falling apart and that's why I love it. Next we have Ambius Prime 1 transmissions and I'm using this pretty much as a drone uh, really just you know setting the underlying uh, texture of the track. And if we look inside Ambius Prime 1, you'll see we have the XY pad in. What I really like about this is that you can really create these moving textures and you can, you know, automate them however you want. I really just kind of threw this on. I wasn't really trying to do anything too crazy. I literally just threw it on and uh, it worked for what I was trying to do. So I just left it how it was. So moving on, the next three tracks that I'm using are from the 6 series, and the 6 series is very great for horror. I mean, it's made for horror. So uh, I have three different tracks going on. One of them I processed a little bit differently, but the first one I'm using the Sick One Nightmares, and this is some really just monstrous sounds, and you know, if you're trying to scare somebody, you're going to use this. So, And the way I use it, I'm pretty much on all the jump scare sort of moments, I'm using these sounds just to really like add to more the you know the fear element of these parts you know like if, if you're watching the queue or a movie and you know the, the monster jumps out you know why not put some monster vocals in here so that's what I was thinking so I was just kind of playing around with some of these sounds you know, there's a bunch of different sort of monster sounds and uh, sounds that are just, you know, very not human, which is, I think, for this, it's just, it just makes it perfect. Next, we have Sick One Madness, and this patch, I basically bounced it out and I reversed it. I did a little bit of processing as well. I used some stereo delay and an amp sim, uh, amp simulator distortion just to sort of dirty it up a little bit. And... You know, I thought it'd be cool to sort of take some of these tracks and show you how you can, you know, pro you can do your own processing too. Bounce them out, manipulate them, chop them up, do whatever you want. I mean, pretty much uh, whatever you want to do to get, you know, create that sonic world of madness, which is kind of what I'm going for here a little bit. The next one I'm using is Sick One Brand. And the way I'm using this, it's pretty much just a very static sound. And I thought it'd be great to layer it up on some of the jump scare parts too, just for adding a little bit more dissonance, a little bit more just uh, chaos to the overall part. And um, I'm only using this twice, but just on the parts where I really feel like I, I want to just like keep layering and layering. Uh, I really wanted to do a lot of layering with, with this track. You'll see, you see there's a lot of tracks going on here and uh, you know so the brand one static sounds are just it was just perfect for that Next we have the Friendo Tales Bow High Sustained Tune 4 patch and 
this library is honestly one of my favorites and it's my it's kind of my go-to when it comes to really scary sort of cello-like sounds. This isn't a cello. Now what makes Friendo I think so cool is because it's a custom built instrument with baling wire and wood and, and bolts and just all kinds of really eerie stuff played with a bow. Uh, if the devil had a cello, this is probably what it would sound like. It's just, this thing is just scary as hell. And I love using it. Uh, I think for this, uh, it just works perfectly in the context of everything for just bringing that sort of, uh, you know, chill factor to it. You know, and for as scary as this instrument sounds, it's a lot of fun to just sort of move your fingers around and, and just play around with it and to see what kind of sounds you get. Uh, it's really cool and I definitely like using this one a lot. So for the remainder of the track, we have five tracks of Glitch Hero, and Glitch Hero is kind of my go-to when it comes to you know really big sound design hits and effects. And I used a few different ones. I'm using the Shutter kits. I'm using the Shutter ensembles, the ambiences. I'm, I'm using one instance of the Low ensemble, so it's different than Shutter. But Shutter and Low are just they're built for I think you know that really dark, ominous, big hits and great for horror. Um, I really like using it for this. Uh, I, there's some ways I used it differently for rhythms. So the first one we're using is the shutter kits. And this is pretty much, is a, I'm using it as a crescendo, sort of sweeping in right before the big jump scare sounds happen. So let's go ahead and hear this by itself. The next one we're using is the Glitch Hero Shutter Ensembles, and the way I'm using this, this is only for the big jump scare hits. So when listening to this by itself, you can hear that most of the big impact from the, from the jump scare parts is coming from this track, and when you listen to it in the context of everything, it just sounds that much more cooler, I think. <laughs> Now the next instance of Glitch Hero Shutter Ensemble that I'm using is pretty much I had threw an arpeggiator on there and I wanted to just 
uh, build the tension and just create some sort of building rhythm that sound like pretty much it leads up into the jump scare and it's just slowly building and building as you can see moving on uh, it's just one note and then there's two notes and then eventually four notes but since it's arpeggiated i have the arpeggiator on you know the way the rhythm works with the arpeggiator just creates these really cool and interesting rhythms and you know i wanted it to be i wasn't really trying to get anything too specific i just sort of kind of played around with it and the notes that i found or the sounds that I chose just ended up uh, being what you hear right here. So to see how some of this works, if you're just sort of holding your fingers down and playing around with it, you know, just kind of feeling it out. I mean, with the way I was doing it, I wasn't really doing anything specific, just sort of threw the arpeggiator on, uh, held some notes down until I found something that kind of works and just sort of using your ear when you're doing it. So if you're trying to build a beat with it or something, you know, you can get some really industrial and just dark sounding rhythms. The next instance of glitch hero that I'm using is the Shutter Kits Ambiences, and you know this is pretty basic, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, some, you know, I'm just using it for sort of layering it in with the Ambius One transmissions, uh, bringing another layer of you know sort of a drone, and uh, trying to you know pretty much with all this, it's just to create a lot of tension and a lot of dissonance. So having all these different drones sort of layered together you know, we'll definitely achieve that, or try to anyway. You know, I really like just playing around with this one because as you move your fingers around, you'll just sort of discover certain notes that are just a little bit more uh, darker than others, and you know, each one is different. So you just play around with it, and you know, find some sounds that you dig. All right, so of all the tracks, we've reached the last track, and the last one is Glitch Hero Low Ensemble, and I'm using this very simple. It's just one note that just sort of repeats every now and again. Um, really just for sort of building the anticipation for the, everything else that's scary. And uh, let's listen back. So I want to thank you guys for watching. This track was a lot of fun to make and, you know, it's definitely fun to sort of take a break from the musical stuff and just get dark and scary with it. So, and if there's anything you guys want to see on Sound Iron Sessions, leave them in the comments below and we'll try to make that. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and thanks again for watching and we will see you guys next time. See ya.